Lord, as we begin today, we ask freshness of your spirit that out of confused issues may come simplicity of plan, that out of fear may come confidence, that out of hurry may come deliberation, that out of frustration may come guidance. Let us get to our work, not head first, but heart first. May we be able to disagree without being disagreeable, to differ without being difficult, to be honest without tension, and frank without offense. In an atmosphere of teen spirit, Amen. Good day everyone. To my classmates, special to you sir, we are the group 10. Our topics for today is all about the social issues and problems of the Philippine society. In post-disaster issues and crisis, especially the protection in violence against women and children in evacuation centers. In this topic, we will learn the protection issues in different sectors of society. In the following, as fighting in Marawi continue, UNFPA create women-friendly space. This WD oversees the protection of women, children in evacuation centers. Addressing child protection in Philippine disaster laws, violence and disaster. So first, let us discuss as fighting in Marawi continue, UNFPA creates women-friendly space. So let us define what is UNFPA. The United Nations Population Fund or UNFPA, formerly the United Nations Fund for Population Activities, is a UN agency at improving reproductive and mental health worldwide. It works include developing national health care strategies and protocols, increasing access to birth control, and leading campaigns against child marriage, gender based violence, obstetric, festula, and female genital mutilation. So the UNFPA is a UN agency aimed at improving reproductive and mental health worldwide. If one country had a disaster and crisis, they extended their help by partnership with the Department of Social Welfare and Development through their program and services, just like creating women-friendly space. Pawak, Philippines Women affected by the fighting in Marawi explain the violence against women to a group of new mother and girls in a tent at Pawak. The tent served as UNFPA Women Friendly Space, established in partnership with the Department of Social Welfare and Development to provide women and girls displaced by the violence a safe space to share experiences, rebuild social networks, and acquire relevant skills and information. In the tent at Pawak, women and children affected in fighting in Marawi. They share their experiences in violence against women and children. Facilitators at the Safe Space conduct information session focus on the protection of women and children and can refer women to support services such as counseling, psychosocial support services, and health care, particularly for victim survivors of gender-based violence. So facilitators at the safe space conduct information session for the women and children can listen and gain knowledge and they can also access the services of UNFPA such as counseling for these women needed to be heard, psychosocial and healthcare services. Those living in crowded evacuation centers, for instance, often lack of privacy protection from gender-based violence. And for those evacuated in the crowded evacuation centers, there are often lack of privacy support. They are, not, they are not separated according to their gender. They are very risky of sexual harassment. At the outset of the conflict, with the island in Marawi of martial law, Miss Sunny feared for her family's safety. 
her husband learned that UNFPA Women Friendly Space were looking to train internally displaced person or IDP as facilitator and he encouraged her to join to cook better. So Miss Sunny is one of those internally displaced person or IDP. Her husband learned about the programs and services of UNFPA Women Friendly Space. We're looking to train internally displaced person and her husband encouraged her to join as one of those facilitator of UNFPA. Learning more. One of the women spoken of Miss Sunny is 23-year-old Jalela Amaral, who gave birth to her sixth child a few days after fighting erupted. Miss Amaral heard about the women-friendly space from other IDP, unlike Miss Sunny's session. Through the conduct of information against women and children, a facilitator of UNFA, women are able to learn their rights and protection. Reaching more, the, the program funded by the United Nations Central Emergency Response Fund and Australia aims to reach 16,800 women and girls affected by the conflict. Through this program of UNFPA, the Women Friendly Space that is funded by the United Nations, women are able to have a safe space and Australia aims to reach 16,800 women and girls affected by the conflict. Women and girls are more vulnerable in emergencies, such as in this crisis. They have specific needs by Saklas Beck, UNFPA country representative in the Philippines. Hello everyone, I am Christine Tinabakan and now I'm going to report about DSWD oversees the protection of women, children in evacuation centers. To ensure the safety and welfare of women and children in the aftermath of Typhoon Ampong, the Department of Social Welfare and Development, DSWD in, coordina in coordination with local government units, has established child and woman friendly spaces in the evacuation centers in all affected regions. The establishment of child and woman friendly spaces is in accordance to Republic Act No. 10821 or the Children's Emergency Relief and Protection Act which seeks, which seeks to protect children, nursing mothers, and pregnant women before, during, and after disasters, calamities, or any emergency situation. Said FO is currently doing field visits to the affected families in different evacuation centers throughout the province of Cagayan, Cagayan de Oro City to assess the condition of ev evacuees and the evacuation centers where they stay. stay. The SWDFO OIC Regional Director Lucia Alan yesterday visited the municipality of Amulong, Cagayan, where 584 families composed of 2,069 individuals were affected by Typhoon Umpong. Moreover, this DSWD is closely coordinating with the protection cluster members, such as United Nations Children's Fund, World Vision, and the United Nations Population Fund for possible argumentation support of child-friendly kids, family tracing, reification kits, and woman-friendly kits on the establishment of child-woman-friendly spaces in the affected areas. A team of psychologists from FO Car conducted immediate, immediate psychologi psychological first aid to the survivors of a landslide at Itogon, Biket, including the three children who are currently residing with their relatives in Kias, Baguio City. The team co coordinated with the Sunflower Children Center, one of the NGOs which volunteered to provide psycho psychosocial interventions for the children and the regions. DSWD, FOS, and CAR SWADS MATS and Field Office Disaster Monitoring and Response Teams are still closely coordinating with their respective counterparts and the LGUs in the monitoring of the evacuation centers.
and DSWD or NROSC send family food packs and non-food items worth 71,258 and 87 pesos and 75 centavos field offices. They are doing their best to implement measures to deliver the basic needs of all. Those devastated by Typhoon Ompong, we appeal to all sectors to work together for the speedy recovery and rehabilitation of all affected communities. And that's all. Thank you. Good day everyone, I am Teresa Valihera and I am your next reporter. But before we will start, I have prepared some quotes here and I love these quotes. It says, Saving children in humanity should always weigh greater than all world politics. The children we save today is the future that we save tomorrow. So as a future social worker, one of our uh, rule in the society is to protect the lives of children in our community. In line with that, my topic for today is about addressing child protection in Philippine disaster laws. So children are the most vulnerable and most affected sector of society in any disaster event. So it's kuan gid tinuod gid siya kay ang mga bata gid kasagara ang mostly gid nga pinaka maapiktuhan every time there is typhoon, may mga sunog and any disaster. So in 2018 According to the Philippine Statistical Authority, or PSA, there are more than 30 million children in the Philippines that may be at risk to disasters. And you know what? Uh, in the same year, the World Risk Report also ranked the Philippines as third among countries with very high disaster risk. To address this issue, the IFRC or the International Federation of the Red Cross and Red Crescent Societies launched a global research that focuses on the main three issues. First is systems to protect unaccompanied children. So the unaccompanied children are a person who is under the age of 18 unless under the law applicable uh, to the child. Majority is attained earlier and who is separated from both parents and is not being cared for by an adult. So, muna siya ang, ang meaning sa unaccompanied children. So, second na issue nga ginatutukan nila sa IFRC is separated and orphaned children. So, separated children defined as children who had been separated from their parents with no expectation of return and no contact information for their parents. Last is children's access to education and the participation of children in disaster risk management. So the Philippines was chosen as one of the five countries to conduct a case study. The case study aims to review national and legal policy frameworks on child protection and disasters. The Philippine Red Cross or PRC supported by the IFRC or International Federation of the Red Cross carried out the case study in the province of Leyte that was severely affected by Super Typhoon Haiyan in 2013. With the participation of DSWD or Department of Social Welfare and Development, Debt and Department of Education, UNICEF, United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund, and the UP CSWD or the University of the Philippines College of Social Work and Community Development and Save the Children Philippines were gathered together for the discussion. So 
aside from looking into the laws and policies for child protection in emergencies and disasters, the case study also look into the different programs and services of government and non-government organizations for children and families affected by the disasters. So one of these programs and services is RFTR or the Rapid Family Tracing and Reunification. So, the RFTR where personal information and photographs of children are collected to support the search for and reunification of, the, of their family members. This service was initially used by the DSWD and UNICEF in the aftermath of Typhoon Haiyan. SGBV or sexual and gender based violence cases against children and women which occurred after Typhoon Haiyan were also discussed during the round table discussion with the different government personalities. The Philippines case study has now been finalized and it concluded that actual implementation of the primary law on child protection in disasters which is the Republic Act 10821 The Children's Emergency Relief Relief and and Protection Act To straighten child protection program the PRC or the Philippine Red Cross is recommended to align and mainstreaming the activities under Republic Act 10821 at the chapter level, information dissemination and capacity building on RA 10A21 also be carried out. That's all and thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Marilu Arisgado Vanguardia, BSSW1B, reporter of Group 10 about violence and disasters. Violence and disasters. Violence is an important facing communities affected by natural disasters, though the full extent of the problem has not been thoroughly studied. Disasters, a sudden event such as an accident or natural catastrophe that causes great damage or loss of life. What factors might contribute to increase in violence after disasters? Increased stress and feelings of powerlessness due to bereavement, loss of property, and loss of livelihood. Mental health problems such as post-traumatic stress disorder. The scarcity of basic provisions. Destruction of social networks. Breakdown of law enforcement. Cessation of violence prevention and other social support programs. Disruptions to the economy. Types of violence are likely to increase after a disaster. First, child abuse and neglect. There is evidence that severe child abuse may increase after a natural disaster. Inflected traumatic brain injury is one of the most severe forms of child abuse, often leading to hospitalization and even death. Next is intimate partner violence and sexual violence. After a disaster, these women may be forced to rely on a perpetrator or survival or access to services. Displaced women and children are often at risk of sexual violence as they try to meet their basic needs. Next is exploitation including sexual exploitation. In areas where human trafficking is widely prevalent, disasters may result in conditions that provide opportunities for traffickers, large numbers of unaccompanied children. Sexual exploitation may increase in situations where women's options or employment are diminished. In the acute case, focus should be on caring for victims of violence and on taking measures to prevent abuse and exploitation. Health services delivery must include care for survivors of rape. This care should include at a minimum treatment of physical injuries, pregnancy prevention, treatment for sexually transmitted infections, and where appropriate HIV post-exposure prophylaxis. Ideally, health workers should be trained to identify victims of violence and provide care that ensures their safety, privacy, confidentiality, and dignity. 
and victims should be referred for counseling and other services. Displaced children should be registered so that children separated from their families and possibly orphan can be identified and offered special care and protections preferably with family members in their local communities. Women's access to resources and assistance should be ensured and women must be made part of the response and distribution of networks. During Recovery those assisting a community with reconstruction should take into an account that the physical and social disruption caused by a natural disaster may increase the likelihood of a family, sexual and other types of violence, and that previously existing resources for victims of violence may be damaged or no longer functioning. The following steps can ensure the safety of the community and help preserve its ability to prevent and respond to violence. Community networks and programs that addresses violence before the disasters should be identified, revitalized, and strengthened through training and support. Efforts to address violence must engage men, women, and children of the affected community in the planning phase. Taking care to get input from the groups who tend to be overlooked in program development such as abuse women and persons with disabilities. Violence should be included in any injury surveillance system that is established. Community education and awareness campaigns are useful for informing residents how to report acts of violence, what services are available and where they can go for care. Campaigns can also be used to influence social and cultural norms related to violence. Thank you for watching and have a good day.